All foreign workers to undergo medical screening every two years. MH370 search depends on expert advice. Good afternoon, you're watching News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. Foreign workers in the country will have to undergo additional compulsory medical checkups every two years from January the 1st next year. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said the move was aimed at reducing the risk of transmission of infectious diseases spread in the country. Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid added that the additional health screening had to be conducted every two years on the 4th, 6th, 8th and 10th year of the workers' stay in the country under the maximum 10-year period of employment. Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid, who is also the Home Minister, said this in a statement after chairing the Cabinet Committee meeting on foreign workers and illegal immigrants in Parliament yesterday. On the issue of employers hiring foreigners due to the low cost involved, he said recommendations to progressively increase the levy from 2019 for foreign workers had been considered and accepted. The aim is to encourage employers to hire local instead of foreign workers. As of July 31st, 2017, the number of legal foreign workers in the country had decreased to 1.758 million from 2.135 million in 2015. Now, the decision whether the search for Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 will resume or not will depend on experts' findings and the agreement of the three countries involved. Transport Minister Dr. Sri Liao Tiong Lai said this was because all information received, including from the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, or CERO, must be scrutinized and verified by the MH370 Action Committee, led by the Department of Civil Aviation, or DCA. Sedang meneliti fakta-fakta yang diberi pada kita. Baru semalam, CERO bentangkan fakta ini. Kita tak terima apa-apa uh, fakta yang baru kecuali sehingga semalam dan kita kena tengok sama ada fakta ini fakta lama atau fakta baru. Kita kena cek apa uh, yang boleh meyakinkan sama ada fakta ini boleh meyakinkan ketiga-tiga buah negara bukan saja Malaysia, China dan Australia untuk melihat kembali keputusan yang telah kita buat pada tempoh hari. Death Australia was responding to a media report quoting Ciro's David Griffin that the agency had potentially narrowed the search area to three specific locations based on satellite pictures taken two weeks after flight MH370 went missing. The report also noted that the Australian government, however, rejected Ciro's report, saying it was not precise enough. The federal government has approved an allocation of 20 million ringgit for the implementation of My New School program at four primary schools in the country this year. Education Minister Datuk Sri Mazir Khalid named the school as Sekolah Kebangsaan Paya Rawa Kedah, Sekolah Kebangsaan Ulu Yam Selangor, Sekolah Kebangsaan Selanda Melaka and Sekolah Kebangsaan Kampung Aceh Pahang, each getting an allocation of 5 million ringgit. Datuk Sri Mazir said the allocation was provided to enable the school's concern to become community centres for the local community. He said the programme carried out under the National Blue Ocean Strategy or NBOS was introduced to maximise the use of the school resources. The program would also be carried out at four more schools, each in Kedah, Pahang, Negeri Sembilan and Sabah, involving an allocation of 7.5 million, which had yet to be approved. A graduate unemployability has been found to be the highest in six university disciplines. Higher Education Minister Datuk Sri Idris Jusso revealed that the graduates from Business Administration, Applied Science, Human Resource Management, Accounting, Arts and Social Science disciplines found it tough to secure jobs even six months after graduating. Datuk Sri Idris said a total of 54,103 graduates were unemployed six months after they completed their studies last year. The number was based on the Graduates Detection Survey System, or SKPG, which recorded 238,187 finishing their studies last year. Datuk Sri Idris said that between 2015 and 2016, graduates' marketability had seen an increase of 1.2 percent. He said among the initiatives taken by the ministry to ensure that graduates remain competitive when entering the job 
market was to use the cumulative grade point average or ICGPA system in universities and introduce more work-based learning between the government, universities, community and industries. Two people were killed after a car crashed through the barrier of a hotel's multi-story parking lot in Genting Highlands yesterday, shattering the calm of this hillside resort in the early hours. The Perdua Azia plunged 13 meters from the fourth floor of the parking lot at around 4.15 a.m. The victims were identified as 50-year-old businessman V. Palanisami, 50, who was the driver of the vehicle, and Chinese national Ming San Mao, 43. A hotel employee said that several people ran to provide help to the victims after hearing the loud noise. The car landed on its top in a nearby mini recreational park, but no one was at the spot at that time in the morning. Police said investigations indicated that the victims were about to leave the parking complex when the mishap occurred. It appeared that Palanisami from Sepang in Selangor lost control of the vehicle while making a U-turn. Both bodies were sent to the Bento Hospital for a post-mortem. A wooden house at Kampung Rancha Rancha Darat in Labuan was completely gutted in a fire yesterday, leaving three families homeless. Shari Abdul Majid, one of the occupants of the ill-fated house, sustained burns on his back of his body, which he suffered while rescuing his three-year-old son, Hiraz Abdul Majid, from the blaze. The 54-year-old man was given first aid by fire rescue department personnel before being sent to the hospital for further treatment. The fire broke out around 11 a.m., but the distress call was sent out about an hour later. And by the time firemen arrived, the house was almost burnt down. Labuan Fire and Rescue Department Chief Zainal Madasin said two fire engines with 21 firemen and three volunteers to put out the blaze, and they managed to get it under control. It is believed that the fire started from the kitchen while a family member was preparing lunch. Here's an update on the flood situation in Malacca. The number of evacuated residents at five shelters due to the floods in Justin and Alugaja has decreased to 183 compared to 198 last night after flood waters has slightly receded in both areas. Now, head of the Secretariat for the State's Disaster Management Committee, Lieutenant Colonel Effendi Ali, said Justin recorded the most number of evacuees with 121 from 31 families, while 62 from 14 families are from Alo Gaja. In Jasin, a total of 107 people from 27 families are currently being sheltered at Skolakabang Saan Tehel, while another 14 from four families are at Sri Mandapat Community Hall. In Alo Gaja, 13 people from four families are being placed at Kampung Sri Juram Community Hall. 18 from five families are being sheltered at Tadika Jaim Kampung Pulau, while 31 from five families are at SK Belimbing Dalam. The Malaysia secures fourth goal from synchronized swimming. A teenager delivered a surprise goal for Malaysia in the solo technical event on the first day of the SEA Games synchronized swimming competition. Gan Hua Wei of Suramban was the second last performer last night and knew she had to beat Singaporean Debbie So's score of 73.8253 points to snatch gold at the National Aquatic Centre in Bukit Jalil. Huawei did not disappoint the Malaysian supporters cheering from the stands. Performing to the song Torn from the movie High Strung, the 18-year-old earned 73.8386 points to pit Debbie to the gold medal. Mia Yong Sing, also of Singapore, took bronze with 72.3769 points, while Huawei's elder sister, Jen Yu, finished fourth with 70.0292 points. Huawei, who was close to tears during the medal presentation, was elated with her breakthrough in only her second SEA Games outing. She made her debut in the Singapore Games two years ago, but only in the team event.